Welcome back to Escape Man Watch. I'm your host, Falling Titan, and today I'm staring at a new camera, which can only mean one thing. Thank you. We reached our goal at coffee.com uh, for donations. No, we did not. Then how am I looking at a new camera? Let's check out the donations. How am I looking at a new camera? I may have dipped into the watch fund. Dipped into the watch fund. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But All right, we're back, and today we're looking at the Oris Divers 65 reissue from, you guessed it, 1965. Now, Oris is an old company. They started in 1904. And they were named after a brook <laughs> in the city of Holstein, where they started. And apparently the brook was nearby, and they liked the name. And that's where the name Oris came from. You can check out their complete history on their website. Uh, storied brand. We love brands that have history. And Oris, I believe, is still independently owned, which is impressive in today's market. So very cool brand and i love this reissue 1965 uh, maybe i have a thing for 1965 i'm wearing my quick wristwatch check the 63 mass 1965 uh, reissue as well maybe we should battle those two it's been a while since we've done a battle on the channel and uh, <laughs> yeah two 1965 divers that would be interesting like this video if you want to see a battle and if we hit i don't know what's a realistic number Ten thousand likes no <laughs> i don't know let's say 100 likes we'll do it we'll i'll do the battle if we hit 100 likes okay sorry guys let's get into it look at this k-shaped very classic no crown guards beautiful not much taper um sorry i mean curvature to the lugs Kind of straight. Reminds me of the the new Steinhardt 39s, the homages. They look very straight, but this has a little dip, but very, very nice. And let's check the measurements. This is the 40 mil, but let's confirm it. Yep, 40. Lug to lug, the most important. 47. And it's 20 mil bracelet. But let's check out the height. It feels and wears ultra thin. 12.9, so 13. That's me pushing against it. All right, oops. Yeah, I would say 13 height. But a lot of that height is that double domed sapphire crystal. Oh man, it's so beautiful. Look at that box shape. Very vintage, but this one is sapphire, so it's not gonna scratch. Well, it could if you have diamonds, but very tough to scratch the sapphire. And this is a stunning piece. I bought it used off Reddit and it was all scratched up. I rebrushed it. This was really scratched up too. And so is this. Got most of it off and it looks much better. Anyways, so the <laughs> now the price on these they don't have this model available anymore with the bronze bezel, stainless steel with bracelet. They just have one that's um, bronze mid-links right now. And that one is about 3,000 Canadian, about 2,300 USD. But you can get a discount from the gray market dealers, roughly selling for about 1,500 to 1,600 USD. But it's up to you. Do you want to buy from a gray market or do you want to buy from an AD? Now, this movement is the Salita SW200. Oris calls it the Oris 70, sorry, 733. I took off the case back and regulated it um, real quick just to check if it had the red rotor because I bought it used, you know, and it did. I'll put a picture of it. So it was doing about negative 10 and I tried to bring it into zero. It had a little bit of B air, but it was very consistent, so I didn't touch it. So 
we'll we'll check that out when we do the time grapher. All right, the case back is also a, a scratch magnet. So this this watch in general is a scratch magnet, and the case back is ultra scratch magnet. <laughs> now let's check out the bracelet. This one is pin and collar system, and it has rivets on it which I know a lot of people not a fan of the rivets, but this one, I don't know, I like it. And there's a, there's a pin and collar in these ones, so you can't take these ones out. And there they are. So the rivets go all the way as, as far as they can go until the adjustments come in. And look at that taper. From 20 to, I don't know. Let's see, but it's so dramatic, it looks elegant. So 19 right here. So it begins to taper instantly. And then 13.8. And then at the clasp back up to 15 and a half. So dramatic taper from 20 to, to 14 to back to 15. Very dramatic. I love that look. It's very elegant, uh, very classic. So the reissue is very true to form staying, um, like not growing in size, but staying very wearable. I believe 40 millimeter is the best measurement for most wrists. Larger wrists can wear it, smaller wrists can wear it. I don't know, what do you guys think? What is your favorite size on a watch? 40 mil is my go-to after years of trial and error, 37, 38, 42, 44. I settled on 40, I think it's my favorite but of course there's some exceptions. All right, <laughs> so we, let's check out the date window actually. Blacked out day window, so very nice detailing right there. You can see the Swiss made, or it's automatic on top. Beautiful, domed sapphire, I love it. It's reflecting, it's got some AR, you see the blue AR. Very nice. Now the bezel action, not a fan of. It is a little bit tinny. Maybe it's the bronze, I don't know. But feels a little too loose. Not loose per se, but it doesn't give me the the feedback that I usually that I like. Maybe okay, I'll give you an example right here. It feels more solid, more dampened and less tinny. It just feels quality. This is a solid bezel. It's very assuring in the hand. Now this one, uh, not so much. <laughs> and it does not line up, which is a, a negative, another negative. There, you see how it's off by just a bit? Mm, yeah, so <laughs> I love the rose gold indices and hands and that patinaed loom. It really, really goes well with the black, it just pops. Gives it that vintage vibe. This watch is stunning. We got that signed Oris crown. It just says Oris. This watch exudes class, guys. And it just, it disappears on the wrist. Now the, the insert, we talked about it. It doesn't match, unfortunately, another ding on it. It's not, like it doesn't match the indices with the patina. It's brand new silver. <laughs> so a little bit off there but still looks good with that two-tone. And this, this bronze should patina, so can't wait to see a patina. That would be interesting how it's gonna look. So let's compare with the size of the 63. Right before I do the wrist shot and the weight. So both of these are 40 mil. Wow. 40.5, 40. So, which one looks bigger to you? I think the Oris is looking a bit bigger. Maybe because it's more dial, has a thinner bezel, so the dial looks larger. So it's like an optical illusion. What do you guys think? Hmm. These ones are very close. In price, 1500, you can get it for about 1500. Yeah, 
1965. Yep. These these are these are these are very similar. If you're looking at one of these, you might be looking at the other. So it's good to have uh, this in the video. Normally I would show it next to an SKX, but in this case, we're going to show it against a 63 mass. All right, let's check the weight. We're going to check the weight. Oh my God, 118. Ultra lightweight, ultra comfortable. I wore this all day and it's pretty comfortable. It disappears on wrist and I'm starting to like that. I'm starting to become a fan of lightweight watches that just disappear on wrist. So maybe I should get more into titanium. There we go. 6.5 inch wrist. And uh, that's some damage from a crown from another watch, not this watch. There you go. It just, it just becomes one with the hand or the arm, sorry. And that taper is so dramatic. It's so elegant. This is an amazing watch. It wears beautifully and I don't even, it's like I don't even feel it. It's what it's amazing. I love that. I know some people like the heft. They like that heavy feeling. So definitely this Ors is not going to be for you. Maybe the uh the Aquis if if uh you want to stick with the Ors uh family. Uh, I forgot to mention the clasp is milled. So I'm just going to mention that now. Everything else is solid, solid end links and solid links. All right, now let's check on the time grapher. All right, guys, I adjusted the lighting of the camera so we can get, so we can see this better. Some people were telling me in the last video they did not see it. So we're gonna go to 50 for the Salida. I'm a fan of the Salida over the ETA. They said they there's an extra jewel and they re-engineered the teeth on the winding which is important because if you look up ETA 2824 uh, reverser issues, you'll see uh, those gears grind and wear out, I believe prematurely. So a little bit of a re reliability issue and maybe, just maybe the Salida improvement fixes that. So it might be a bold statement, but I rather have the Salida because if you have an ETA and a Salida, you know they do not like to be wound. They don't. They don't wind like this thing. They don't wind like butter. And it just wants to be wound forever. They are kinda, they're not, it's not gritty. It's just, it's like you're fighting, you're fighting something. And that's the best way to describe it. Okay. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna mute it. So yeah, I had 0.2 B air before. I didn't touch the B air. I didn't want to mess with it because I have strong amplitude, 316 and two seconds a day. Excellent. Medium beat, 28.8 BPH. I love it. So I've always had good results with ETA and Salida and they're excellent movements. And let's, we're going to check out the positional variance. So my wrist is always at dial up where most people's are and 12 down doing a lot of stuff 12 down your hands usually like this all right let's do 12 down so let's ignore the fluctuation right here because it has to reposition and resettle let's go this is 12 down so b error went down to 0.1 and that's the main reason why i didn't want to touch it because it's basically nothing and um let's give it let's give it two more rounds we should guys do this for 30 minutes of course i i did it when i regulated it so but right now we're just getting a rough idea and this is pretty accurate okay so right now we're at zero seconds a day 289 12 down so pos positional variance amazing it was, what was it before plus two minus two and now zero Okay, plus two. So <laughs> excellent movement in, in very healthy shape, almost 300 amplitude. Well done. I know Oris calls it the Oris 733, but yeah, it's the Salida and it's, it's an excellent movement. 
they do make an in-house, but I kind of prefer the Salida because it's going to be cheaper to repair. I don't have to send it to Oris. Well, you don't have to send the other one, but you know what I mean. It's just going to be cheaper to service the ETA versus the in-house generally. So we're going to end it with zero seconds. Let's check out the loom. Pretty strong on the hands and very weak on the indices and the loom pit. Loom pip is a bit brighter actually, and the seconds hand is good. It's just, like for comparison, 63 mass. Okay, so here it is guys. I had to charge it with the flashlight or the camera would not focus. The Oris was ultra dim on the indices. But here it is compared to the Seiko. You can see uh, the Oris's loom is weak, so it's another ding on it. But the loom pip is nice and the hands are nice. It's just the indices, they fade fast and they're weak. So definitely loom not the Oris's strongest point, unlike uh, the Seiko right there. Wow, this is a damn, so nice. All right, guys, I hope you liked the review of the Oris. And if you did, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.